Thank you. Thank you for those uh, kind words. And uh, uh, thank you all for being here and uh, giving me the opportunity to share some of my thoughts. Uh, before I begin, I have, to, uh, I have a confession to make. Um, when I was first uh, asked whether I would come and speak on this occasion, I have to say I readily agreed. Much, uh, much to my uh, concern and a little bit of regret because as the time came closer, I started uh, thinking about it a little more closely and I realized uh, that to an audience like this, to an audience of... Uh, media specialists, marketing specialists, people who do this day in and day out, it is very unlikely that I will have anything new, novel, different that I could say at this occasion. So, um, so I have to say I'm here because I made this commitment and uh, like I said, uh, a folly not giving it too much thought, uh, but I'm here. And um, as I stand here, if I was to make another confession, I would say that uh, an audience of the sorts that I see in front of me fills me with more than a little trepidation at this stage. I am absolutely certain that I will not be able to fulfill the brief that was outlined for this event, which was uh, to provide answers and solutions to what we should be doing going forward, because I don't have them. What I, what, what I think I can do is to share with you some of my reflections on uh, what's been happening, what are some of the changes, my concerns, my worries, and at times the things that might keep me awake uh, in, the in the event that the future unfolds the way it possibly could. So that's what I would try and do. It is likely that I will be a little more provocative than, uh, than otherwise, but that's the intent. And chances are that I would leave you with more questions than answers. Uh, that's may or may not be what you want, but uh, like I said earlier, I don't have answers to uh, many of the questions that we are confronted with. But I'm absolutely convinced that if all of us get together and start addressing the real issues, the real questions, the real things, with the earnestness that is required, collectively we will find the answers <clears throat> to continue engaging with the consumer in the context of change that we find ourselves in. Talking of change, uh, I cannot but be reminded of... Uh, a book which I read a long time ago, and a story which I've told on previous occasions when something to do with change uh, was what I had to speak about. And this is a book, uh, The Future Shock, written a long time ago by Alvin Toffler, and those of you who would have read it would re recollect that at some stage in the book, he tries to trace the evolution of mankind. And uh, if you were to think about the fact, that, or if you were to assume that we have an average lifespan of about 60 years, and our 5,000 odd years of uh, mankind, we could be living in a, around the 80th generation at this moment. If we are the 80th generation today, uh, the interesting thing is that for the first, I don't know, 50, 60 odd generations, uh, it took man that much time to just come out of the cave. It took the, took the next five, seven, eight generations for man to master the art of maybe writing, communicating, etc. And it goes on and on in terms of how life moved. The thing I found most interesting was a comment made towards the end saying that almost everything that man uses today, finds indispensable today, has been things which have been invented or discovered in the last generation, maybe two. And the rate of change, as you have seen, 50, 60 generations to come out of the cave, the next several generations to learn how to just communicate, and now, almost everything that we find indispensable, all having been discovered and invented in one, maybe two generations. The rate of change is only increasing. Nothing since the time I read that book, over the last many years till today, suggests to me that the rate of change has come down. If anything, this exponential rate of change has only increased as we move forward. That's the reality. Now while this is statistic which we all know, there is a frightening implication of what this says. And the frightening implication of this is that all of what we think is indispensable today will become irrelevant so before we realize it. And if it was a generation or two in the past, it might be decades that we are talking about now. Now can you even begin to visualize the possibility that the things that you cannot do without will be irrelevant in maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years, I don't know. 
And that's a frightening thought. A thought that we don't often confront. And the thought that we don't often acknowledge because when you are going through this dramatic change, the capacity of the human mind is such that it doesn't really see this. It has a remarkable ability to adapt. So consumers will adapt. The question really is, as professionals who are dealing with consumers and having to find answers to how to engage with them, are we making the changes fast enough to address the changing consumer as we move forward? So that really has been the thought that has been going on in my mind. Now we all know what technology has been doing and how the media landscape has been changing in the recent past. And we all know the digital revolution which is taking place and the role that it will play in our lives, in the lives of consumers, it already is. And therefore, <coughs> it is not surprising if you were to start looking at how uh, the media space and the different alternative ways by which we communicate with consumers, how digital has found a way in that overall mix that you see there. It's still small. At 4% in the Indian market, it's not large, but we know the rate at which it is growing. And there are several people who are here, and quite rightly so. In fact, why several? I don't think there would be anyone here who is likely to suggest that this will not continue into the future. That the contribution of digital will not keep rising as we move forward. That the role of conventional media as we've understood it will keep diminishing. I think we all realize it. <clears throat> there will be a few amongst us who might be even bolder. Who might be bold enough to say that this will go on at a rate which will make digital possibly the largest media overtaking the traditional media like television and print etc. Now for those of you who wonder whether that's possible, indeed it is. But it is a bold statement. It is a bold statement because it hasn't yet happened in the United States. It hasn't yet happened in markets like Japan. But it has happened in a market like the United Kingdom. Digital has overtaken television, it has overtaken print and has become the largest medium through which uh, advertisers are engaging with consumers to communicate what's going on, to engage with them and inform them about uh, their brands, their offerings, etc. So it's happened there. The question really is, can it happen here? And like I said, there are some people who are bold enough to predict that it could happen in a market like India and possibly sooner than we realize. Now, uh, there could be others who may have different points of view, but I don't know of anyone who will disagree that the trend that we are going to see going forward will be one where this will keep increasing over a period of time. And therefore, I think there would be a reasonable consensus around the fact that mainstream media and its, and its preeminence, as we've seen it, and its uh, role in building brands and engaging with consumers will come down, whether we like it or not. How rapidly it comes down is the only debate that some people will have, and I've told you what some people think might happen as we move forward. Now, <clears throat> I just want to now think about and share with you one or two perspectives which made me reflect in terms of what could happen. And I want to think in, and I want to share with you um, an example that we've lived with over the last 10 years, which gives us a sense of what technology can do when it hits a sweet spot of a real consumer need. And that example is one of telephony. And we've heard of phrases like leapfrogging, technology leapfrogging, moving to the next generation, etc. And the best example I can think of is what's happened out here. Now, for an audience like this, this doesn't require any explanation. Well, before we became a landline country, we are, those of you who are old enough to know, you would realize that you had to apply for a landline connection and wait for years before you could get one. From that stage onwards, we didn't even get to universal landline access. We've leapfrogged and got into mobile technology. What led to that were two things. A, the need to connect was huge. That's a basic human need. And then there was technology which made it possible and costs came tumbling down at a rate that we've not seen before. The cost of handsets came down and the cost of talk time came down and most of us think of costs coming down in, in by 10%, 20%, 50%, making it half, a third. And I want you to see what happened. Costs came down not by 20, 30, 50% or half, a third or a fifth. Costs came down 50 times, 5-0. The cost of time, air time today is 150th of what it was when it was first launched. The consequences of that are also visible to all of us. About 800 odd, the numbers may differ, the order of magnitude, 800 million odd connections that are there in this country. That is absolutely staggering and defies, um, I, would, I, would, uh, I would suggest that anyone 
10 years ago who had even remotely suggested and came even close to this number yeah uh, is um, i don't think uh, i don't have words to describe uh, what that person would be i have not met anyone who could have made any prediction anything close to this now if this has happened in this space and revolutionized one part of the uh, the landscape and how consumers react and this technology when it has done this is not just provided connectivity it has led to a social and cultural transformation when you provided the capacity and capability to connect to 800 million consumers who were not in this earlier and those changes are quite profound now the real question when i heard this and uh, saw this and i reflected on this is are there such technologies which could exist in the space that we are interested in which could play havoc with the fundamental model that we've grown up with and it some levels i could argue that maybe there might be and if you just spend a minute thinking about uh, a simple digital video recorder the technology exists it's available in a few homes you can get it today and what does this technology do it simply provides the power of what to watch when to watch and how to watch and shifts it from to the consumer and liberates the consumer from the normal model of having to be dependent on schedules which are published and broadcasters will uh, send you what they want to send you at the time they want to send you that's really what it does i have to say that it's changed the experience in our lives in my life i don't know how often i watch live television i have things recorded and we watch it when we want to watch it i can pause it i can record it i can review it it's just remarkable in terms of the change that has happened and yet the truth is that the change has happened in a few homes it hasn't materially altered something because while i've because if it did the implications would be quite serious and i'll tell you what while it offers a tremendous consumer value along the lines that i talk about the consequences of this are quite significant which i haven't touched about which is that ever since this has come in the amount of advertising that has been seen in our homes is close to zero it's close to zero because why would i want to watch advertising when i'm sitting to watch a program i might be in that business and i might want to see that but as a consumer when i sit and watch ad uh, watch a program and content on television i don't want to be interrupted by a capsule of ads which are going to come in and take away from the joy which i had in seeing the program this allows me the opportunity to do that and i do it and i see my i occasionally see ads because i'm in the business and i want to know what's going on but my wife my kids they wouldn't want to see any of that and that's a scary thought thankfully it's only happened in a handful of homes because it's still an expensive technology uh, relatively speaking now imagine the possibility that what you saw in telephony mobile where cost came down 50 times in a period of 10 years 50 what do you think would happen out here what if the cost tumble i think it cost the dvr about 4000 5000 rupees today what if it came down to 400 what if it came down to free what if it became a standard feature in every set top box which was loaded in your home can you imagine what would happen i don't know of any consumer who would willingly say hey i love being interrupted in the favorite program that i'm watching to watch the television commercials that you're showing i don't know of them now this is a frightening thought and those of us who believe that it can't happen it can happen and it could possibly happen sooner than we imagine why would what happened in 50 times reduction in mobile telephony costs and air time costs could something like this happen over the next 5 years in india and if this happened in the next 5 years what does it mean it simply means that the 30 second commercial with which we have grown up with with many of whom we've earned our stripes the scheduling the planning and everything else that goes along with them will become history history in the way we know it yeah and that's really the very frightening thought that i want all of us to confront with now if you feel that the opening session of this conference is just going downhill in terms of uh, what it means and there is gloom and doom there are some there are some things which are unchanged and i think it's just as important for us to reflect on what that unchanged aspect is in many ways just because a consumer is in control of what she watches and when she watches does not mean that it eliminates the need for her to be informed to be made aware of the different brands the different offerings the different things that can improve her quality of life that need remains if anything i would argue given the proliferation of brands and choices which are taking place in this country that need will increase she will need to be made aware 
only how you engage with her and what it takes to do that will undergo a change.